Good morning, I'm Jim Pappas. Um, I think I know just about all of you here in the room. The, um, so the, uh, this, is the, this is the fifth, I think, Persistent Memory Summit. And um, the, uh, this is uh, going to be, we, this is going to be one hell of a day. We've got, um, people are going to be filling in here. We expect the room will get full. Um, we are, we've got a very, very busy agenda this year. We are squeezing a day and a half of material into one day. So the, it will be going, the speakers will be going at a, a faster clip. Um, we just had too much material. We could not, we couldn't spill this over into two days. Um, the venue is only so large. We couldn't really do dual tracks. So you're gonna get a, a day and a half of content in today. So that's kind of uh, what's going on. Um, first of all, as, um, I'm, I'm here today as, in my role as the Vice Chair of SNEA um, and uh, also a dual role inside of SNEA. There's a Solid State Storage Initiative and I co-chair that with um, my friend Alex McDonald who's sitting up here in the corner. And uh, I'm, as I said, I'm Vice Chair of SNEA. David Dale is sitting over here as well from NetApp is the uh, Chair of SNEA. And uh, it's my pleasure to actually be here and, and, off and start this uh, conference off today. So a little bit about SNEA at a glance. We're an uh, organization of about 160 unique member companies with about 2,500 active contributors. And we have a reach of about 50,000 uh, end users and IT professionals. So it's, uh, as industry organization goes, this is um, actually one of the more active and vibrant um, organizations uh, in the industry. I've, I've been involved with many, many initiatives. Many of you know, I've worked with some of you on many other initiatives. Um, and so the, um, we are, uh, SNEA is doing great in that regard. Um, here's a, just a couple of examples of, of current projects. I'm not gonna read the list, I'm not gonna go through it. But for instance, we are now going and we're starting ISO um, several ISO submissions this year to actually make um, a lot of the work that's uh, gone on inside of SNEA and make it into uh, ISO specifications. Another thing that SNEA has been remarkably good at doing lately is working with uh, other organizations. So for example, the Green Grid, um, we, uh, TGG here, the Green Grid and SNEA have been working together for a long time and uh, I was also a founder of the Green Grid. And you know, collectively, just if you want to think about the impact that we've had, um, we were in a situation where it was unquestionable that government employees would be coming up with, uh, with uh, guidelines and requirements for the IT industry. And they, they would have, the, these requirements would have come irrespective of their ability to really know what could be done and what was feasible. And, um, SNEA working on storage, the Green Grid working on computers, have focused where we took responsibility for this direction ourselves. We've improved energy efficiency of data centers, of the uh, stuff that goes into data centers. And we did this in a way that was non-disruptive non -disruptive to our industry, led by the industry itself, taking responsibility to make things happen. Other things that, I'm sorry. Other things that SNEA's uh, been doing, Persistent memory, obviously a, a, a big deal for me. We're here today all about that. We have um, uh, persistent memory over fabrics is kind of coming up in a big way. We'll, we have a session today. Paul Grun and Stephen Bates are gonna be talking about persistent memory over fabrics today. Um, that's an area of persistent memory that's still under active development. A lot of what we've started several years ago is, is pretty much complete. It's, being in the operating systems, you'll be hearing from Microsoft and Linux and uh, VMware today the, um, uh, of how the infrastructure is, is there and it's ready for persistent memory today. The, um, but new areas like fabrics um, are gonna be where much of the development and those of you, we welcome your participation in, in this development of these standards. Also, we have uh, Swordfish is coming. For those of you who are familiar, the, once again, another example how we work with other organizations. DMTF uh, is doing the Redfish. We're doing Swordfish. That's uh, a whole new management system. For those of you who don't know what this is, I promise you, you will. 
Um, this will be replacing IPMI and eventually SMI, SMI as well as the new modern way of, of driving storage ma uh, management. So that's the brief overview for, um, uh, of, the, uh, of SNEA overall. And now on behalf of uh, SSSI, I'd like to welcome you to the Persistent Memory Summit itself. And um, SSSI is an organization that uh, myself and Alex McDonald from NetApp run. And um, we, uh, first I'd like to thank our sponsors who um, helped make this event and kept this a free event um, and uh, who are here um, de demonstrating. They have, uh, most of the sponsors uh, chose to have um, uh, tables outside during the breaks and lunch. Please go and take a look and see what they're, what they're doing in this area. The, um, so we have um, what, solid, what, um, what SSSI does is we, we have this basic mission. Everything that's solid state um, is, comes under, inside of SNEA, comes under solid state storage initiative. And we educate, we develop, new spec, uh, develop work, we uh, educate the industry, and we collaborate with other organizations. You know, another example of collaboration for the persistent memory over fabrics, we're collaborating with Open Fabrics Alliance. And Paul Grun, who will be up here on stage later, will be talking about that. Um, we, uh, one of the most active um, areas inside of SNEA, these are the members um, of Solid State Storage Initiative. If your company's not out there, um, well, maybe you should consider, because a lot, a lot of work goes on. You'll be seeing uh, a lot of what's going on in persistent memory today. So, Moving into the uh, Persistent Memory Summit, um, you know, usually I try to provide some sort of perspective on where things are going. I've, I've used a lot of different examples over the year. And uh, there was something, there's a guy, Eric Kazmarek. Um, um, you know, I met him for the first time at uh, In Memory Computing Summit um, in October. And he uh, threw out this idea that just interested me. And he, he basically started the argument by saying, imagine a, imagine, this is going to in-memory computing. Imagine a server with no storage at all. It only has memory. So it's not that hard to imagine. But, you know, and then he takes the thing further consider, you know, a, a complete data center with no storage. And so, okay, that's interesting. And the, um, and you're probably wondering, uh, I see Michael Oros there, the executive director. You know, I, uh, I'm the vice chair of SNEA, and I'm talking about a uh, data center with no storage in it, and I, I certainly have fiduciary responsibility for, for SNEA, <laughs> and at least a, a moral responsibility for making this industry that we, we drive forward. Um, so to, to balance this vision, I, I, I wanted to get a, a, a good, credible slide about really what's happening in the storage industry. So I turned to Tom Coughlin, who you'll also see later. And, um, and, and here's, you know, a, as credible a source as I could find, saying that you know, storage is roughly going to triple over the next few years. So the, the, and, and certainly Tom's not wrong. So, my SNEA had, a, 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 you know, don't, don't question my, my commitment to the storage industry here. But the, we have to, there's, there's a discrepancy. Uh, on one hand, we're talking about data centers with no storage, and we're talking about tripling of storage, and how do we reconcile this? And um, it, it all comes down to perspective, and, and this is pretty much my last slide, so I'm going to talk about this a little bit. So to know about Eric Karzmazek, he, he is running a, uh, an open source project um, for uh, a persistent memory aware uh, JVM. So uh, according to Eric, 40% of all applications that run in data center are Java applications. And, um, and he's predicting that it's going to go to the point where persistent memory is going to become so prevalent that from an application developer's point of view, they never even think about storage anymore. It's, it's invisible to them. They only think about memory. And if you think, you know, you create a Java object, that object goes on the Java heap, it's already in memory. And, you know, so from the perspective, 
if you're the operator of a data center, nothing's happening to storage. It's not going away. In fact, you're going to have more of it than you've ever had. At the same time, if you're the user of the data center, the person who writes the applications that goes in, storage may become invisible. And a lot of you are in the storage industry, and you're, this probably worries you, me saying this. But at the same time, you know, it's changed. Almost everything in our lives, as technology advances, a lot of that advancement goes into hiding the technology, hiding the complexity of it from the users. You know, I woke up this morning in this hotel, and I like to sleep with the room cold, and I like it to be warm when I get out of the shower. So I turn up the, the thermostat. You know, there's a lot of technology behind that thermostat, right? I, I, I didn't worry about, you know, is there a furnace downstairs or a boiler? Is it a steam boiler or is it a, a water boiler, hot water boiler? You know, there's circulation pipes, there's heat transfer units, there's all of that technology is hidden. Now, the person who runs this facility cares about that a lot. The person who, who runs your data center cares a lot about the storage that's going in there. But the complexity of your storage is going to have to change to hide that technology from the person who writes the application. That's assuming, of course, that Eric Karsmazdik is correct. Now, Eric was supposed to come in. Is, by the way, is Eric here? No, OK. So I, 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 now I don't have to worry about you know, him saying I said all the wrong things until he sees the video. But the, um, anyway, the, um, if, if, if Eric's correct, th this is a big change to the storage industry. And it's not a bad change. But it means that your products change. Your products become invisible to the users of the data center. Not the owners of the data center, but the users of the data center. So um, as we go through today, I, I'd like you to think about that. Just think about the fact of, of, of a world with no storage. Not that that storage doesn't exist in the physical sense, because of course it will. But from the user perspective, it gets hidden away. And everything that you do is just <coughs> memory. So. Uh, I saw Andy smiling over there as I said it. You know, Andy is the uh, chief architect for who started this whole mess of persistent memory. And the, um, so he gets the credit for this. I, uh, I say mess in a, as, a, as a positive, positive term here. You know, it's, it's, kind of his, it, it's kind of his baby. You know, babies make messes. But the, um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's a crappy one. The, um, Anyway, the, um, uh, it, but anyway, this is, uh, I want you to think about this. Think about that level of change, how that affects um, the world that you live in. And, you know, as persistent memory comes in, it will have impact on the storage industry. Some of you will become, you know, remarkably successful because of persistent memory. And, and uh, some of you might go away. I mean, it's, you know, disruptive change, that's what happens. And, you know, I'll go back to, uh, my very good friend, Dr. Bates, over here, one day, uh, a couple of years, a few years ago, told me, uh, talking to him about persistent memory, and he said, it just excites the hell out of me. He says, it's just the most exciting. He said, I, I could think of 10 different startups that I would like to start. And later on, he, am I out of time? OK. <laughs> later on, he said, I could come up with 20. Well, you know, the, he. Um, he, he did. He left his company. Oh, he also said, I'm scared. It scares the crap out of me. That's the polite way of saying what his exact quote was. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and that because he's worried about what his, how his company's going to make this transition. And uh, he, he now has his first of his 10 startups or 20 startups, whatever he has his plans for. But I want you to think about this because you it's up to you. Because you are here in the audience, you are here because of persistent memory. It's your responsibility to go back to your firms and make sure that they're the one, part of the companies that prosper in this disruptive transmission, not the ones who are a victim of it. And that's it. Thank you.